So Matthew chapter 5, verses 43 to 47. I'll be reading from the New King James Version. So Matthew chapter 5, verses 43 to 47. This is Jesus speaking. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you that you may be sons of your Father in heaven, for he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brethren only, what do you do more than others? Do not even the tax collectors do so. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word. It is found in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 9. And it says, Blessed are the, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall call the sons of God. But before we, we start, let's pray. Uh, our Heavenly Father, we thank you about this privilege that you have given us to be in here in your presence today. Lord, I'm not worthy to share anything from you, and I pray that you show up so that you and only you will be seen and glorified. May you grant us your Holy Spirit to open our hearts and mind so that we can, we can hear and understand what you, want us to, what you want us to do. We pray all these things in, in your name. Amen. Uh, most of the things will be on the screen for those who may have a hard time to uh, understand my accent. Uh, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Disharmony or conflict is the main challenge or main problem that our this uh, universe has with God. And the reason for this problem or this disharmony is because man is out of harmony with God because of sin. In fact, after sin, man has uh, separated with God and lost peace, not only with God but also with each other. And the whole universe uh, became full of chaos and rebellion. Either it is the case of family members or co-workers or even so-called Christian believers, they all have no peace among them. When conflict arises, the tendency in this world is either to ignore it or to suppress it using either force or threat or intimidation. And both of these methods result in a violation of integrity of people in conflict. The seventh beatitude that we are looking today give, uh, takes every believer into a task of conflict management or conflict resolution in a way that bring people in conflict together and restore their relationship. And such conflict management uh, in, in God's kingdom brings out peace and blessing. Uh, now we are going to see the, some roles of children uh, God in terms of peacemaking. And we are starting with God Father. Our Heavenly Father is depicted in several uh, Bible scriptures as God of peace. And one of them is Hebrew chapter 13, verse 20. Also, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18, we see what God has done after 
uh, men were separated from God because of sin. First uh, Corinthians chapter five and verse eight. First Corinthians chapter five verse eight. We read the following: Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to Himself through Jesus Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. So this means that after sin has separated the man from God, uh, uh, God was pleased to take the initiative to reconcile human, human beings through himself uh, using the, the sacrifice of his son, Jesus Christ. And because of this reconciliation, we now have peace through, uh, through Jesus Christ. We have now peace with God through Jesus Christ as uh, it was depicted uh, in Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Now we are going to see uh, the role of God's Son, or Jesus Christ, in terms of peacemaking. First, uh, Jesus Christ is the propitiation of our sin, as it is depicted in First uh, John chapter 2 and verse 2. Uh, the word propitiation here can be... Uh, looked at as uh, either peacemaking or just uh, it's just peacemaking because uh, the blood of Jesus Christ cleansed our sins as it is in Hebrew chapter 9 and verse 28 and, the, and then solve the problem of sin before God and, and this restored the broken relationship between, between man and God uh, and created the peaceful condition. Once the human being were far away from God, because of sin, the human being was separated from God, but because of the blood of Jesus Christ, we were brought near through the blood of Jesus Christ, as it is in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 13. In him, that is in Jesus Christ, now we have full access to the Father. Christ is also our peace, as it is in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 14 and 16. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 14 and 16. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 14 and 16, we read, For he himself is our, our, our peace, who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation, and that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the enmity. Uh, two words I highlighted, and the first one is, is that Christ is himself our peace. This means that uh, when Jesus Christ dwells in us, he doesn't simply give us peace, but he became our, our peace. He himself became our peace. The second word, word is both, which means both, Christ, uh, both the Gentile and Jews. And the blood of Jesus Christ united both Jews and, and Gentile, reconciled both of them, and reconciled both of them to, to God. The blood of Jesus Christ didn't reconcile the human being, but also reconciled the, the, the whole universe, as it is in Colossians chapter 1, and verse nine, verses 19 and 20. Colossians chapter 1, verses 19 and 20. We read, For it pleased the Father that in him all the fullness should dwell, and by him to all reconcile the things to himself by him, whether things on the earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of Jesus Christ. So on this verse we see that uh, through the blood of Jesus or through the sacrifice of Jesus, God not only reconciled the human being to himself, but he reconciled also the whole universe to himself, and therefore Jesus became the the peace for the whole universe. The Holy Spirit is also peace to us, and we read in Romans chapter 8, 
verse 14. Romans chapter 8, verse, verse 14. We read, for those who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For those who are led by the Spirit of God, they are children of God. And being led by the Holy Spirit always include bearing the fruits, and the fruit of the Spirit is peace, as it is in, it is in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. In Romans chapter 14, in verse 17 also find another important role, important role of the Holy Spirit in terms of peacemaking. Romans chapter 14, verse 17, we read the following. For the kingdom of God is not eating or drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. So whenever Christ is expressed in us through the Holy Spirit, uh, he became either joy toward God, he also became a uh, righteousness toward ourselves. That is, we became uh, strict and righteous in everything we do. The expression of Jesus Christ in ourselves also uh, became the peace toward, our, toward others. That, that means uh, we seek to be in peace with everyone we are involved with. Now we are going to see the second half of Second beatitude, beatitude, which means which says that the peacemaker shall be called the sons of God. Jesus, the Son of God, has made peace between man and God. As the sons of God, we must also follow him to make peace with everyone. The sons of the devil always make trouble, and the sons of men always fight against each other. But the sons of God must make peace with everyone they are involved with. We read that in Hebrew chapter 12, verse 14. Hebrew chapter 12, verse 14. Hebrew chapter 12, verse 14, we read, Patient peace with all, peace, with all people, and wholeness without which no one will see the Lord. This means that we have to, to make peace with, uh, in our home. We, we must be uh, in peace with, in, in, uh, with our neighbors, in our community, in our workplace. But this peace must not simply mean that, must not be a, an outward behavior but it must issue, issue, issue out from our new nature, from our new heart, so that we can keep naturally the peace with everyone we are involved with. Then this will keep those people around us to say that these people are truly the sons of God. You may be familiar with this saying, like father, like son, in fact, uh, the, seg the, the seventh beatitude doesn't tell tells us how we became the sons of God. It simply tells us that the sons of God should make, us make peace like their heavenly father is. This simply means that uh, the sons of God ma must have the character of their father. Our father have have sacrificed his son, have handed him to the hands of Satan to be uh, killed in order to make peace. So as the sons of God, we must be ready, ready available to sacrifice anything in order to make peace with everyone. Matthew chapter 5, verse 43 through 47, uh, is, 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 is like, it's is expand on the on Matthew chapter five verse nine on our seventh uh, beatitude because it shows us how we, we we should show ourselves that we are sons of God. That means we have to love our our enemies and pray for them. Matthew chapter five verse forty seven we read. 
For if you greet, greet only your brethren, what more are you doing than others? In other words, uh, this me, uh, other, uh, others means those who are not the sons of God, such as tax collectors or anything. So the sons of God must not only greet their, their beloved, their friends, but they also uh, go beyond that and, and, and make friendship with their enemies, their opponent. If there is a rupture of any of our relationship, we don't have to nature or to, uh, to nurse that, rub, that uh, animosity. In contrary, uh, we don't have to, uh, to avoid and uh, try to ignore the, uh, uh, those people who, who are, who are uh, our opponent, but instead, uh, even though this should be the, our natural way to do, uh, in, in most of cases, when there is a, a, a rupture of any any of our relationship, uh, we tend to to do uh, is just cross uh, the street so that we don't meet and greet our en enemies. But that's the uh, this the impulse not from the Holy Spirit of God who have sacrificed His, his Son in order to make peace with with human being. Uh, peacemaking. It doesn't want animosity to remain, but it wants reconciliation and, and harmony. But you may, when you may ask yourself, uh, what's the point of these personal issues uh, depicted in the peacemaking from the sermon on, on the Mount of Blessing? Uh, are these issues of praying for your, your enemies and greeting them or other form of uh, personal reconciliation, uh, what do they have to do with the peace problem that our, our world is facing today, such as terrorist attack and nuclear war? But the point of these personal issues depicted on the, the message uh, peacemaking from the, the Mount of Blessing is to make clear that everyone who hear the, the message uh, of the Lord who hear the Lord's voice should become a new creature and have a, a, a new heart so that uh, and this is the true starting point of uh, peacemaking. Peacemaking is not a one-off event. It's a pathway. It is a true lifelong journey. And we are going to see some steps leading up to peace. First, God said in, uh, in Isaiah chapter uh, 57 and verse 21 that there is no peace to the wicked. Back on verse 20 on, on, on chapter 57 of Isaiah, we read, but the wicked is like the troubled sea when it cannot rest, whose waters cast up mire and death. You can think of when uh, we live peacefully or just how peacefully it will be when you respect your family members, your neighbors, or even in the community uh, at, work, uh, at work with your co-workers. And you can also think about how restless it will be if you don't respect anyone of, of, the, uh, of people that you are meeting. In order to have the perfect peace, we have to, uh, to, to, to restore our relationship, our personal relationship with God. It's true, uh, Jesus uh, finds us uh, reconciliation for every believer, but this true must be, uh, uh, this fact must be true in everyone, in everyone's life. So in Job chapter 22, verse 21, we read how we, we can restore our relationship with God. Job chapter 22 and verse 21, we read, Now acquaint yourself with him and be at peace, thereby good will come to you. The same message is given in Psalm chapter 34 and verse 14. Psalm 
chapter 34, verse 14, which says, Depart from evil and do good, seek peace and pursue it. You can't make peace with anyone if you are not peace yourself. So in, before you, you can help us or we can make peace with anyone, you have to be in peace yourself. Uh, this was said in Romans chapter 8, verse 5 and 6. This is a summary which said that the mindset on the, the flesh is dead, but the mindset on the spirit is life and peace. In other words, uh, whenever we, we receive the impulse from the, the, the devil through our flesh, and we think about it until we commit sin, then we became spiritually dead. This means that uh, our spirit became depressed and restless. We feel something uh, in, in, in ourselves just contradicting, uh, contradicting and and we are, we are restless. Instead of peace, we, we, we have tr conflict. But whenever we receive the impulse from the Holy Spirit and we think about it and we obey it, then we became, uh, we become, our heart became easy, we became uh, strong because the Holy Spirit gives us life and peace. And this life of obedience and living and, uh, and acting according to the Holy Spirit, it, it, give, uh, it, it help us to, uh, to give the conscience without offense, which is another step leading to peace. We read in Acts chapter 24 and verse 16, Acts chapter 24 verse 16 say, this being so, I might also I myself always strive to have a conscience without offense toward God and man. I myself always strive to have a conscience without offense toward God and man. Our Heavenly Father wants us to have a conscience, uh, to have a, a heart we, we, uh, at peace. That means a heart in which the conscience has have no offense or condemnation or reproach. The last step, but not the least one, to uh, reading to peace is to allow Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, uh, dwelling and ruling within us. We read, uh, as we read in Colossians chapter 3 and verse 15, Colossians chapter 2, 3, and verse 15, we read, And let the peace of God rule in your heart, to which also you were called in, in one body. In this world, there are many people who, who are wealthy, who are famous, or who have the high position, but being so, it doesn't mean, mean that they have peace and, and satisfaction. Because the fact that the man has been created for God, he can only receive the inward peace and satisfaction only after receiving God. In our, in our peace journey, we, ha we meet two types of challenges. And the first challenge is related to our inward peace. In fact, having the inward peace, it doesn't free us from the outward tribulation. In, in John chapter 16, verse 33, we read that the things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace, but in the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheers, for I have overcome the world. In other words, believers may, may have inward peace, but they may still face outward tribulation because we live in the world. But they still have the inward peace because they, they meet and touch the Lord within them. 
whenever we lack the peace while we are in, in, in uh, tribulation, it simply means that we are not living according to the spirit or we are, we are touching things outside God. The second challenge is related to peacemaking and it is peace achievement. You may long and work for peace, but its attainment may not come. That's why Paul said in Romans chapter 12 and verse 18, Paul said, if it is possible, as much as it depends on you, live peaceably with others, with all men. So this should be the goal of every peacemaker. Don't let the rupture of any of your relationship be your fault. One reason uh, peace achievement may not come is, where, is when your life of obedience and your mes uh, the message of truth may elicit the hostility from men. People may hate you or may get angry with you because, because of what you have said and what because you have said, uh, because you have done or said what is right, but this doesn't necessarily mean that you cease to be a peacemaker. It is not your fault if the stand of truth you are taking is make, is causing division. Remember, Paul said, in, uh, 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 Paul said that if it is possible, live at peace. This means that there are times when standing for the truth will make it impossible. When peace and, and truth, when peace making and truth mismatch each other, there is what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 10, verses 34 through 36. When peace making and truth mismatch. Here is what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 10 and verses 34 through 37. Do not think that I have come to bring peace on earth. I have not come to bring peace but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father and a daughter against his, her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's foe will be those of his own household. He who, loves, uh, he who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and he who loves sons, uh, son and daughter more than, more than me is not worthy of me. So this, this means that we have, to work, to work, uh, we have to work for peace and we have to love peace, we have to love our enemies and you have to, to, to pray for them. But we, have, but we, we must never uh, aban abandon uh, our loyalty to, to the Lord and to his message, uh, no matter how, ma how much animosity this will bring down upon our heads. Uh, to finish up, our, uh, our world is in much need of uh, true ambassadors of God of peace, those who can carry on the work of Jesus, uh, the, work, uh, the work of Jesus, which is a peacemaking, and bring reconciliation to broken relationship. We finish with the uh, exhortation from Paul, as it is in Philippians chapter four and verse six, six and seven. Philippians chapter four, verse six and seven. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7, we read, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and mind through, through Christ Jesus. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word today. Lord, Bring us to the place where we have a desire for the fullness of peace 
that doesn't come because of our circumstances change, but increase our understanding of who you are, our God of peace, and cause us to walk in the path of righteousness by your spirit, that we may enjoy your peace. May your Holy Spirit continue to be with us today and continue to, to read our, our heart and mind in peace and to be our, our, uh, the peace in our heart. We ask all those things in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm.